So we actually are going to start with Aries um, because Aries is the first zodiac sign in astrology. So hi Aries, welcome to the new moon in Aries. Happy birthday to the Aries suns watching. So this is going to be a message between April 11th and October 20th, 2021. There's a bit of a cycle opening up Aries and new beginnings. So this is your first house of self. This has everything to do with who you are and how you're perceived. New beginnings. Um, there may be new things that you're that are changing about you, Aries. You may be changing your hair, your head, your physical appearance in some way. But I know that this new start has something to do directly with who you are. This is a new beginning for you, as you. So what is the Aries new moon message for Aries, please? What is the message for Aries, Sun, Moon, and Rising, might I add? Messages for the Aries New Moon for Aries, Sun, Moon, and Rising. I'm already feeling that there's a need to be patient, which is interesting because that is one of the things that Aries struggles with. That is one of the things that Aries is challenged with. So we have a message here, Aries. I just recorded your tarot message for April. It is on my YouTube channel. If you'd like to check that out, I'm being reminded of it because we have the Ten of Wands that came up. So this mess, this card was heavily aspected in your April reading on YouTube if you want to check that out. You can find it at um, Pisces Priestess YouTube channel. But yeah, so Aries, there's this heaviness, okay? There's this, there's this completion ending for you. Now, you do have fire here. This is fire energy, you, Aries, Leo, Sagittarius. So that's going to be something you can identify with. These are things that you're passionate about. I was just reading a little bit about this card after your reading in order to find a title. So as I was reading, um, I'm remembering that this is talking about extra responsibility. There's something that's burdening you, Aries, but uh, over the next six months, your load is going to be lightened. Um, there's going to be a need to get very, very determined and really tap into yourself, your willpower. Um, there were a lot of other, there's control that came up with this card, okay? Um, and also the chariot card that came up. So there's something here about being strong enough to carry something that's very heavy. There's a lot of extra responsibility when it comes to reaching a goal or completing a cycle, okay? This is about taking on extra work between now and April. I'm sorry, between now and October. Um, to get a job done to accomplish something the bottom of the deck is the three of Pentacles and the death card and the ten of Pentacles with the moon some of you guys may be dealing with Pisces or cancer but um, I'm seeing an illustration here of the moon cycle specifically there's something here that is over okay there may be some kind of apology or offer that is relevant especially for those of you guys who have faced competition or uh, conflict in any way. But yeah, there's something secretly that is over here. It may have to do with your home, your family, your career. There's a lot here about work and career, your future. There's going to be some endings. There's going to be some transformation, especially when we have that Scorpio full moon at the end of April. Definitely some cycles of completion over for you because of the Scorpio full moon. Some of you guys may be watching um, around then. And please keep a lookout for my Scorpio full moon video since that's coming up for you so heavily Aries but here's your message for this new moon um, some of you guys are working really hard at work this is literally a work situation this is you working all together but carrying the weight of three people some of you guys do more or work more you literally work for you do enough work for that three people should be doing but you're carrying it all on your own in order to accomplish something at work in order to accomplish some kind of project or contract that you're trying to fulfill but please know there's going to be certain endings okay because some of these things you're just not meant to carry, Aries, just because you're strong enough to carry these things. Now, these are all different burdens. You guys are all carrying different things, but I can tell you that you guys are all carrying a lot individually. This is very Aries energy here. Okay, you're strong enough to do this, but that doesn't mean that you deserve to have to carry all this, Aries, especially those of you who can relate to heaviness and burdens when it comes to work. Um, this may be certain things involving online energy. Okay, but I really get the message, especially because this came out for your April reading for me too, that there are burdens that are about to be released. You know this is only temporary, and between now and, April, between now and October, things may be kind of heavy, but I'll tell you what, at the end of this cycle, you're going to be so grateful that you did all that you did because there's going to be a sense of accomplishment, and you're going to be able to start new and kind of have that sigh of relief, Okay. So who you are, Aries, carrying your true identity is going to be heavy. There's going to be certain burdens, but there's also going to be certain completions and things that you no longer have to carry as you step into this new self, okay? So I hope you guys are all having happy birthdays. If you're an Aries sun, thank you so much for watching. And let's shift to Taurus energy. 
Hi Taurus, welcome to the Aries New Moon. So this is going to be a message from April 11th to October 20th and this is your 12th house. Okay, so this Aries New Moon is happening in an area that has to do with endings for you. Subconscious endings, spirituality, you're getting ready for your birthday if you're a Taurus sun watching. Um, so this is about who you are at a subconscious level because Aries is your 12th house Taurus. So this is about who you dream to be, your subconscious self, definitely your shadow self, certain things that you've had to sacrifice, um, maybe in favor of who you are or things that you've sacrificed that have kept you from being who you are. But this is definitely the end of a certain road for you because you're getting ready to step into the new moon in Taurus in about a month, okay? So your spiritual self, your dream self, your subconscious self, your shadow self, who you're afraid to be, things you have to sacrifice, and spirituality come up here. But the 12th house definitely has a, a huge subconscious impact. It's the house of endings, release, sacrifice. Okay, um, we have the page of wands coming out for you as a tarot message this could be an aries leo sagittarius person you may have aries leo sagittarius in your chart or someone else does but leo to me may be an important we have libra and leo energy that may be important during this cycle um, but other than that the page of wands is a new expressed passionate message so you're definitely feeling this fire energy aren't you taurus now that's interesting as for you as an earth sign you're used to being more grounded but you're feeling the passion this is about looking good going on an exciting adventure um good news is coming in okay and the bottom of the deck to tell me more about this is the justice card this may have to do with libra this may have to do with court or balance decisions the law in any way um, something is going to be expressed to you between now and literally Libra season in, until October. So there's something here about that. You may be expressing something to a Libra. Um, but yeah, there's important decisions and balance that needs to take place between now and the next six months. We have the Page of Cups. We have a water sign. We have a Pisces and a Leo here. Maybe there's a decision between a Pisces and a Leo or something like that. We have the Devil. This is Capricorn showing up for you. We have the Three of Swords. Uh, someone here is separating from something toxic, something codependent, and they're doing so very victoriously. We have um, a lot of emotional attention and recognition here. Some of you guys are, yeah, definitely breaking up from something that was very chaining to you. And I don't know if there's a breakup with a Capricorn to mention here or sorrow or pain. Someone here could be separating from something that was obsessive or addictive. But we have new love coming in after a breakup from something toxic, okay? New love, new feelings. We've got pages coming out for you, Taurus. So these are new beginnings, passionate messages, emotional messages of love. You're going to have a decision to make between something that's passionate and something that's emotional. So that's quite interesting. And there's also something here about balancing passion and emotion as well between the Page of Cups and the Page of Wands, okay? So you've got some decisions to make based on how you feel. And, you know, this has to do with your 12th house. So there's going to be maybe um, something in regards to an ending or sacrifice that is good news. Okay, I love that the Page of Wands is here because there's new adventures for you between now and October, Taurus. There's new enthusiasm, new passion, excitement, adventure, exploration. Like the Page of Wands is great news. Okay, and whatever this newness, this could be an individual coming in, a younger fire sign, or just someone who's young and passionate, makes you feel young and passionate and attractive, confident, bold, someone who's ready to go on an, a new endeavor. This is going to restore balance for you, and it's, it's probably new love, it's a new crush, it might be the energy of a child, I do sense two children here for some of you guys, um, but I love that Taurus, that this ending, the endings that you go through between now and October are going to help you step further into who you really are subconsciously, who you're afraid to be, you're going to have to sacrifice certain things, but it's going to be well worth this new passion that you tap into as well. So thank you so much, Taurus. I hope that helps. Happy birthday to the Taurus suns at the end of April. Let's shift to Gemini. Hi, Gemini. So this is a message, a tarot message for the Aries new moon happening in April, April 11th through October 20th. We have a card coming out for you. Now, Gemini, let's talk a little bit about how Aries is 11 houses from you. Please watch for your rising sign and your moon sign. This energy has everything to do with who we are, our personality, um, how we're perceived, and it's us as an individual. But for you, Gemini, Aries occupies 11 houses away from you, so it occupies the 11th house. So this has to do with groups of people, Gemini, who you are when it comes to the internet, when it comes to online uh, collaborations and collective energy. This is your collaboration 
collective self, Gemini. Literally who you are if you were standing in a crowd of thousands of people. Who are you? Who are you when it comes to groups of people, crowds, friends, um, things like that? So there's going to be new beginnings. There may even be new friendships here that align more with this new sense of self that you're tapping into between now and October. Um, who your friends are may be important. So yeah, this is the 11th house of community, humanitarianism, groups of people and crowds. So the, the, the most message I have for you is who you are on the internet, your collective self, um, who you are at a collective level when you're in gr groups of people and who you are, who you become, um, you know, I'm hearing birds of a feather flock together. So make sure people you're so associating with, especially online or your groups of friends, whenever you're with uh, yourself and three other, three or more other people, who are you? Because you are a mirror, Gemini. Okay, so keep that in mind that you're mirroring certain things back to people. So you have to keep in mind who you are and, and stay who you are, not allowing other people to affect that, okay? Groups of friends or, or people that you're associating with, okay? This is about who you are in a crowd of people. You are receiving the chariot card. This is a cancer, okay? The card of cancer. I don't know if you guys know any cancers. Cancers are born right after you. They're the, they're the zodiac sign right after you in astrology. Um, sun, moon, or rising, but there's this cancer energy, okay? Some of you may have a significant cancer friend. This is also a card that comes out to represent travel and victory and also a certain vehicle, okay? Someone in a wheelchair sometimes. That's not going to be for all of you, but this is a card of mental acceleration, harnessing mental power over uh, seemingly obstacles in your way. You can see here there's certain things in your way um, certain things that you can see, certain things that you can't see, but you're going to victoriously accelerate beyond those things, Gemini, if you step into who you are. And this is about having mental control over these things. This is about really harnessing something, harnessing who you really are, okay? Now, the bottom of the deck, though, is the Seven of Swords, and we have the Temperance card under that, your opposite sign, Sagittarius. We have the Sun card. We have the Hermits. So we have Virgo that may be important, a Virgo child. We have Sagittarius energy. Virgo, Leo, and Sagittarius hanging out here that may be important. And then the Knight of Swords, which is you, Gemini, or an Aquarius or Libra, but this is Gemini. So there is an important message here coming to you, Gemini, and it's from a very an attractive person, someone who's feminine and bold and attractive. Okay, there's a need to focus, okay, and reevaluate, Gemini, because there's going to be some things um, that you're going to have to really rush forward and say in order to not miss certain opportunities, okay? Speak up, Gemini, all right? Because I don't know, I don't know if there's rejection here to mention or missed opportunities or just needing to reevaluate, but there's communication from both ends coming here with the Eight of Wands and the Knight of Swords. So between now and April, there's going to be certain things that you're going to have to decide very quickly. You know, the, the Chariot and the Knight of Swords are very quick cards. But let's talk about this Seven of Swords at the bottom of your deck, okay? Just be careful of manipulation, deception in any way. You're going to be moving past this. You're going to be, you know, lies are always an obstacle for Gemini because you guys represent the truth. So these are, this is an energy. Um, some of you may resonate with this or this may be other people around you, but I'm just going to read the energy of the cards. This is someone who is not transparent, okay? They lie, they steal, they take, they try to get away with things, okay? But there's a need to strategize as well as what I'm hearing. I always keep in mind that with the Seven of Swords, although it is kind of a eh kind of card, like you don't really like when it comes up for you because you know there's some kind of deceit, but there's also a need to strategize your way forward. Gemini. Okay, now there may be something here involving a Cancer or a Sagittarius, Leo, or Virgo. Um, there may be something here that you need to reflect on in regards to your happiness and patience, maybe even some experimenting, okay, and balance before you rush in, okay, because there is going to be a need at some points during this cycle to really rush in with your truth and speak, maybe even be a bit impulsive. That's why Gemini and Aries get along because they're both impulsive in different ways, but this is about you wisely rushing forward after a time of patience, knowing what makes you happy, okay, um, and just kind of taking that, kind of taking that back possibly, but not allowing people to take that from you. But just be careful of any deception, especially involving vehicles or acceleration forward. I can just see that deception has been an obstacle for some of you guys, whatever that means. But be careful of friends that take from you, friends that lie or steal or manipulate, okay? Because these are about individuals in your life. Remember, the beginning of your message was all about uh, groups of people, okay? Whenever there's a crowd, 
you know, there, there's going to be most likely someone in that crowd who is not being authentic. Gemini, you no longer can lie about who you are, okay? Because you're speaking to the masses. You're being seen by crowds of people now. So you have no choice but to step into who you are, okay? And I'm hearing something about being your own friend, um, something along those lines. It's almost cheesy a little bit. Like, be, being the type, be, make sure you're being the type of friend that you would want or something like that. Because this has to do with, like, friendship for you and communities all right so hopefully that helped gemini thank you so much let's shift to cancer energy cancer you just showed up for the gemini reading so if you have gemini energy or if you're dealing with a gemini you may want to watch that because your energy showed up there but uh this is a message for the aries new moon happening on april 11th through october 20th so this is a six month cycle and this is happening in your 10th house, Cancer. So Aries energy is kind of interesting for you because it's cardinal just like you are. So it wants to take action. It wants to have authority, but in a slightly different way than you, Cancer. Okay, you're more about the home and the family and the foundation and emotion. Okay, Aries is about who they are. It's kind of impulsive. It's bold. It's fire. It's not water like you are. So it does square you is what I'm trying to say. So I have to mention compromise. I have to mention certain conflict with a 90 degree angle like this. And this is in your 10th house, especially if you're a Cancer rising. So please watch for your rising sign. So the 10th house is the midheaven. So this is about your future self, Cancer, to put it simply. So let's get you a tarot message to go along with this astrology message. What is the Aries new moon message for Cancer? And we have a card coming out. So yeah, Cancer, this is about your legacy. This is about career. This is about your plan moving forward this is the opposite house of you okay you're the fourth house capricorn's the tenth house but you're going through that um capricornian energy of planning and um you know your path in life your purpose what you're meant to do so who are you cancer in relation to that who are you in a, in a career setting who are you and are you committed to who you are, okay, over the next six months? Now, there definitely could be some new beginnings in the career, um, a new plan you come up for yourself, um, just newness when it comes to that, okay? But don't be afraid to step up and take charge because the 10th house has a lot to do with authority. But the tarot message coming out for you is the two of wands. You're receiving fire. This is a fire message for Aries. Aries is a fire sign. So you've got Aries, Leo, Sagittarius with the wands here. Talks about expression and passion, but you've got the two of wands. So you've got a little bit of a choice here, Cancer, that some of you guys are going to encounter between now and October when there's an Aries full moon. This is the card of choosing a new path for yourself, holding the world in your hand, and kind of looking out to the horizons, okay? Perfect card to come up for the 10th the tenth house because it's the 10th house of the future. You're literally looking out to your future. This is about being in between where you've been and where you're going, but you're going to have a choice to make. And there is certain conflict here that you're going to be experiencing with that square I mentioned, especially when it comes to emotions. This is you as a Cancer, this Queen of Cups. It's a Cancer uh, feminine energy, but for the men as well. There, oh, we have you showing up here, Cancer. We have the Chariot. We have the Chariot, the Ten of Swords, the Queen of Cups, and the Five of Wands. So emotional conflict, pain, betrayal, um, painful endings, but you you seem to be really mature emotionally, okay? You're still, you're still sustain sustaining, you are still sustaining that, ma that mature, emotional, loving vibration, even though there's conflict and outside influence, competition. Um, there's endings and you guys may be dealing with someone else with cancer energy. We got Scorpio and Pisces here. There's definitely some endings with a water sign woman. That could be you or someone else. Okay. But definitely some conflict. Okay. And an ending, but you're going to be accelerating. And then we have the three of wands, which is actually the card that comes up right after the two of wands, which is the card that came out. So I know you guys are going to be choosing a new path for yourself between now and October, literally. Okay. It's a, it's kind of just about waiting for ships to arrive at certain points, but you have a choice to make between what you know and what you have yet to discover where you've been and where you're going, okay? That's what this card is all about. It's a card of expansion. It's a, it's a card of knowledge and expanding your horizons, okay? Choosing a new, exciting endeavor for yourself. And you can't grow and be comfortable at the same time, guys. I always say that with this card. If you're gonna wanna grow, you're gonna have to not be comfortable. If you wanna be comfortable, chances are you're not gonna grow. So that might be where the conflict is coming in. 
All right, some of you guys may be turning your back on certain competition or conflict, something that needs to change. You've got quite the fire energy here. You're Aries, Leo, Sagittarius. Whatever is conflicting you or comp competing with you emotionally, causing this kind of tug of war battle between what you feel, um, it def definitely any endings that you experience between now and, and October as well, you're, you maybe even put a lid on your cup because of emotional conflict with these others that you're dealing with. And because of certain endings you're going through, you may definitely... Hold your emotions a bit closer to yourself because all the while that this is going on, you're in between these two things that you're passionate about, this portal between the past and the future. So I would say to relate that to who you are, this could definitely be a choice between, um, you know, who you've been and who you want to be. Okay, the, the 10 years come up. So the last 10 years, the next 10 years, like cycles, even 10 months may be important, but you're going to need to commit to a certain path. And you want to keep who you really are in mind so that you're not going to have to compromise that. You're going to want to be dedicated. And this is about literally the path to your future self, Cancer. Okay, there may be a little bit of fear of the future here or fear of commitment, but this Aries new moon is really going to help you plant seeds for a completely new path for yourself, Cancer. But keep in mind, uh, there is a square here. So there's going to be certain compromise, you know, between yourself and career, between you and your future that will come up. But just stay dedicated. Kind of harness that 10th house energy of commitment and accomplishment. Keep your goals in mind. This is about new goals, setting new goals and accomplishments for yourself. Thinking about the long term and the longevity of who you are. So yeah, Cancer, uh, that is the Aries new moon message for you. Thank you so much. And let's shift to Leo. Hi, Leo. This is a message for the Aries new moon happening on April 11th to October 20th, 2021. So we've got a new six month cycle opening up for you in your ninth house of knowledge, beliefs, philosophy, and expansion. So this is fire energy and I know you're going to enjoy this Leo because Aries is your sister sign. It trines and pours positive harmonious energy into any planets that you have in Leo or Sagittarius. So we have a um, card coming out. Let's talk a little bit more about Aries and what it means to you, Leo, on the Zodiac Wheel. Especially if you're a Leo rising, please watch for your rising sign, you guys, because it'll make a lot more sense when it comes to the houses. Um, but as I mentioned, Leo, Aries is nine houses away from you. So this is a new beginning. Um, this is first and foremost about who you believe you are. This is about kind of studying yourself over the next six months, learning about yourself in self-growth and expanding who you are. You may uh, learn or teach. You may be the student or the teacher over the next six months. Um, but this has a lot to do with um, the philosophies of who you are as well, that ninth house energy of discovery. This is long distance travel as well. So who you are may have something to do with discovering yourself overseas or long distances away. But really, you're just going to be learning new things about who you are and expanding, okay? With this fire energy, there may even be a little bit to express. So yeah, who you believe you are... Um, traveling to discover who you are and all those good things so it's really interesting that you're going through ninth house energy with this aries cycle because you pulled the temperance card this is sagittarius you may be dealing with a sagittarius or have sagittarius energy in your birth chart but this is that ninth house energy so this has to do with experimenting testing the waters balance patience okay and uh, we also have the death card here. So we got Sagittarius and Scorpio hanging out. This is actually the cusp of revolution, I want to say. The Sagittarius-Scorpio cusp. Scorpio-Sagittarius cusp of revolution. So that time period may be important. Like, uh, I want to say... November 15th to November 27th may be important, but you want to be patient for transformation over the next six months. There's certain things that you want to end. There's certain things that you want to begin, and you're going to need patience to alchemize both. This is a card of alchemy, okay? Patience and balance, all right? Balance between what you feel and what is real. Balance between reality and spirit. But yeah, there's going to be a lot of transformation between now and the end of April when we have this, the full moon in Scorpio that's going to square you. So yeah, there's something here that's really changing. And we have the Ten of Pentacles here. We have the moon card. All right, You could be dealing with a Pisces, but these moon cycles are really important for us all. We even have the Wheel of Fortune. So we have Fate and Karma. And cycles, so whenever the moon meets up with Saturn or Jupiter, that might be important. So whenever the moon cr transits... Aquarius and Capricorn. So that's interesting. For those of you who are into astrology, the moon transits Jupiter and Saturn once a month. 
And also, there's a message here about the moon. I'm sorry. There's a message here about Jupiter entering Pisces in that cycle. That's going to take place in May, around May 13th, I want to say. May 16th, there's going to be Jupiter entering Pisces for a short period of time. But um, there's cycles here. Cycles, cycles, cycles. And there's also something here about something turning around in your favor. I see a lot of travel here secretly. There may be certain fears to end certain cycles, Leo, in order to put down your guard because there is a need here to kind of defend yourself and be stable and single on your own. But things are changing karmically for you. Um, follow your intuition. This is about the long term. we got the Ten of Pentacles. Could have to do with family, secrets in the home, family. That might be what's ending as well. There may be something that is ending as far as a home environment, career, family stuff. There's some kind of commitment that is changing. I can say that. But that's why the Temperance card is here because you are going to need to be very patient for all of that to arrive over the next six months, my friend. Okay? So be patient with yourself. Be patient when it comes to learning and expanding. And make sure that you're just really uncovering new philosophies about who you are, okay, Leo? But remember, this fire energy is your sister sign. So there's definitely going to be certain fire and passion that, that your sister sign Aries exposes to you. So you're going to be able to express yourself. And this is about expressing who you are and what you've learned. And as you learn and grow, this is literally about your expansive self. You're going to be bigger, Leo. You're going to, who you are is going to be bigger, whatever that means, by October. And you're going to have to express or you're going to need to express all that you've learned. And as you learn, you will grow. So thank you so much, Leo. Hopefully that helped. Let's shift to Virgo. Hi, Virgo, my opposite sign. This is a message for the Aries new moon for April 11th to October 20th, 2021. So Virgo Aries is eight houses away from you on the Zodiac wheel. So this is an eighth house message for Virgo, especially if you're a Virgo rising. Please watch for your rising sign. So we're going to talk a little bit more about what this means, but let's go ahead and grab you a tarot message to go along with this astrology. So yeah, eighth house energy, Virgo. So we know Aries is all about who we are. It's our personality, right? It's our individual self. But for you, Virgo, Aries is kind of intimate. It's in a very secret part of, um, on the chart for you. It's the eighth house of transformation, death, sex. Okay, so this is uh, your intimate self. This is about getting very intimate with who you really are over the next six months, who you are sexually, who you are emotionally, your deep, deep self, and who you're afraid to be, Virgo. Okay, I can tell you that who you are is going to be changing over the next six months because Aries is your eighth house. So this is about who you are transforming, okay, and new beginnings there. So this is a great time to set intentions for anything that you would like to change and or transform. But the tarot message that you're pulling are actually two major arcana. So that lets me know this is going to be quite a lot of major change for you um, over the next six months. You may see this really come to play um, by the full moon in Scorpio at the end of April. Check that video out um, towards the end of the month, you guys. We have the Empress card in the world. We got Venus and Saturn hanging out. Some of you guys may want to look to Venus in your um, birth chart and watch for that sign or maybe look to Saturn, okay? But we have the Empress. This is uh, Aries, Taurus, and Libra energy, female energy, but it's beauty, okay? This is female empowerment. Even if you're a man watching, this may symbolize um, a mother figure in your life or just a, a, a female empowered role. But regardless, this energy is about abundance and anybody can attack can tap into that this is a very highly fertile energy as well so there's cycles of fertility here um there's something here about a mother a sister just women in your life being important this is a very attractive woman virgo this could definitely be you stepping into your confidence this is like the feminine aries energy the queen energy this is a queen okay but she's abundant she can give birth to anything literally metaphorically she can grow anything she can create anything she's very abundant all right and beautiful and she's very attractive like the law of attraction comes up here but we have this with the world so there's some kind of cycle that is going to complete for you over the next six months Okay, you could be dealing with a Leo, Scorpio, Taurus, or Aquarius because we have all the fixed signs on this card. But there's a cycle. There's a beautiful cycle here. Um, there's some kind of completion or success. With Venus and Saturn, though, I have to say some of you guys feel kind of restricted when it comes to love or money or or anything like that. Or there may be some kind of um, boundaries here. The woman, the the boundaries of a woman. Um, 
we have the page of pentacles at the bottom of the deck so this could be you virgo this is a new offer this is a financial message and we have the judgment card okay so there may be some kind of message between now and october you're going to feel really called to accept this there's a there's a newfound value here that you're going to discover and this is a seed that can be planted now this is resurrection this may be a, a financial or tangible opportunity that you're receiving for the second time there may be a phone call this has something to do with regret some of you guys this may be important to mention like there's certain things in the past that didn't work out um, be careful of being pessimistic and detached Virgo some of you guys have a little bit of emotional conflict or depression or regret when it comes to an air sign or an ex or a male in your life okay there's something here about communicating clearly with someone from the past six of cups there may even be something you're juggling from the past some of you have children to juggle okay um, but you're gonna need to make very clear decisions and get very clear about what didn't work out and remind yourself that if you were to change your perspective, there's more of what you lost behind you, whatever that is. So there's something here about the truth from the past, juggling and decisions to make financially, especially when this bad boy comes in, whatever this is, this newfound value. You're going to feel very called to a certain value between now. Um, you're going to be called to a certain opportunity and offer between now and October. Okay, this is literally transformation. This is that eighth house energy that Aries is activating for you, okay? Feeling that inner calling, awakening, okay? There's going to be offers that kind of awaken you and new messages there, okay? But your message is the empress in the world. So there's beautiful cycles here. There's definitely going to be certain things that complete with women in your life or with you as a woman. Some of you guys may be pregnant or your mothers may be coming up here, but I'd love to see you successfully completing cycles, Virgo. Success is here, beauty and success. And that has everything to do with what's changing and changing and transformation. <laughs> Tra changing and transformation forming for you virgo all right sorry i was talking a little fast there but yeah eighth house energy it's very very meta metamorphosis energy so this is about who you were as a caterpillar virgo versus who you are as a butterfly so who you are is changing virgo let's just put it like that thank you so much let's shift to libra hi libra this is a message for the Aries new moon in April on the 11th all the way to October 20th, all right? Very important energy for you because Aries is your opposite. So it's right directly across from you on the zodiac wheel. It is representing the mirror of you. So this has to do with relationships for you, Libra. Aries represents who you are when it comes to other people in relationships, who you are when you're in a relationship, when you're in a partnership. Okay, who other people are as well, Libra, and balancing that out. So let's get you a tarot message for this astrology. What is the Aries new moon message for Libra, sun, moon, and rising? And we have a message coming out here. All right, so yeah, this is all about relationships and partnerships for you. When you have a new moon in the seventh house, there can definitely be new relationships and partnerships of all kinds, not just romantic, but definitely romantic as well. This is the house of marriage that is being highlighted for you. So yeah, this could be business relationships, family relationships, romantic relationships, just friendships, all relationships, Libra, is what you rule. You're going through the house that you rule, so this is going to be interesting. New moon, you want to set intentions for new relationships to um, manifest between now and your season in 2021 in October. Relationships that don't compromise who you are, though, Libra. Relationships where you, you're able to be your true self, um... So yeah, there's just a little bit there coming up with who you are versus who you are when you're in a relationship or when you're not in a relationship, Libra. But definitely new relationships. By October 2021, there's going to be many new relationships that have grown in your life of all different kinds. You are receiving the Page of Wands and the King of Cups. We've got Leo and Scorpio here, Aries, Sagittarius, Cancer, Pisces maybe. Um, but I feel, you know, I think... I think Taurus received this page of wands. So you are also much like Taurus receiving good, enthusiastic, positive news from this page of wands. This could be a fire sign in your life, or this could be the energy that you take on. But I will say with this combination, regardless of who you're dealing with, although let me say quickly, since you're dealing with new relationship cycles, keep a lookout for fire signs and water signs. But if that doesn't resonate, what I really see when I look at these cards is expressive emotional energy. The page 
Ray Jawans is expressing his feelings. He's expressing his love. He's expressing his compassion. There's intuition here. Okay, a lot of love, a lot of sensitivity that needs to be expressed through um, optimism and, and new insight, okay? A new journey when it comes to feelings and emotion. And you wanna know something, Libra, that's not very surprising because these are the kind of things that are involved in partnership. So with these new relationships coming up as you discover more about who you are, and this is also about being in relationship with self. You are in relationship with self first and foremost. So it's important that you're being confident. It's important that you and the people you're involved with are emotionally mature, all right? So there's definitely going to be some new, good news in regards to love and compassion between now and April. Bottom of the deck. I didn't mean April. I meant October. Sorry. We have the Emperor. You may be dealing with an Aries, Sun, Moon, or Rising. Someone with that in their chart. So your opposite sign is here. This could be a father figure. This could be talking about authority and, or control that you're going to need to harness um, this optimism emotionally and this this confidence and this balance because you're being confident enough to express but you're also um, mature emotionally so that's kind of hard to accomplish i love this this could be the energy of someone entering your life as well like this new water sign okay this sensitive fire sign but yeah there's there's something here about um you know stepping into the throne of who you are great energy to come up for the actual aries um, but we have the Five of Pentacles and the Three of Swords. So some of you guys, there may be an Aries who is left out in the cold. There may be um, a divine masculine, a man in your life that you're separated from, okay? Uh, someone here feels abandoned or left out in the cold because of a breakup. Now, Libra, you are going through new relationship stuff. So, you know, that does involve breakups and separation. That's a new beginning as well. We've got some acknowledgement and recognition and attention that you're going to be receiving, maybe even from an Aries, Leo, Sagittarius, or a Scorpio in the future, okay? We have Scorpio, Taurus, Virgo, Capricorn, but you need to be confident enough to be this, the main attraction in the center of attention to get acknowledged for something. Thing. Um, there may be a significant job to mention that someone is separated from, could be going through financial conflict, uh, feeling homeless, or just afraid of those kind of things, okay, um, yeah, because fear does come up with new moons, okay, the moon controls our fear, so someone here may be afraid to be abandoned or left out in the cold, all right, um, and Aries may be related to this specifically, and this could be a situation where someone's boss, there's something here with a, with a boss figure, someone who's a manager or in control or has authority, wears a uniform. Definitely that unemployed energy or just the lack of a resource. Financial conflict that you're going to need to kind of really get control over, be your own boss. Okay, but the message that came out for you is that Page of Wands and the King of Cups, you have something to express emotionally. Someone has something to express to you emotionally over this time period. And that's going to take a lot of confidence. That's going to take a lot of boldness and bravery. So all of this energy came out to remind you of who you are when it comes to relationships and how important that is for you, Libra. How your opposite sign, Aries, can teach you to not over-compromise um, for others. Okay, Libra? Um, so yeah, let's go ahead and shift to Scorpio. Hopefully that resonated Libra. Hi Scorpio Welcome to the Aries new moon April 11th through October 20th 2021 we got a six month cycle opening up here um, In the sign of Aries, which is six houses away from you Scorpio. So this is all about lifestyle this is all about all right, we're going to keep that. Yeah, we're definitely going to keep that message. This is We got a message for you as far as the tarot. Let's talk a little bit more about what Aries means to you, okay? So sixth house is away, especially if you're a Scorpio rising. Please watch for your rising sign, you guys, so that the messages resonate when I mention the houses. So yeah, Scorpio, this is about who you are in relation to how you live. And I love giving this message because it's very difficult to sustain who we are or to sustain our authenticity if we're not living as such so who do you say you are versus who are you living as scorpio because if you're saying that you're a certain kind of person you want to live a lifestyle that backs that up right so these are things that you can do every day as a ritual make it a part of your schedule um, when it comes to who you are all right um your lifestyle this is who you are at work who you are as far as giving giving to others being of service this is about your service self being of service to yourself 
and um, you know working on yourself and this is about health as well the sixth house is about health so there can be new beginnings and work here um, over the next six months by October you could find yourself uh, um, living a completely different way uh, with a di completely different schedule you might even make changes to your eating habits uh, smoking habits you may quit certain habits like you may no longer consume certain products or substances Scorpio with the new moon in your sixth house your health is really important starting new things right now so that you're in a better health you're in a better healthier self this is about being a healthy version of yourself by October so there might be certain things that you change as far as diet or habits this is habitual your habitual self who you've been and things that you've done and who you are things that you do every day um, so yeah, Scorpio, we have the Queen of Wands and the Six of Wands coming out for you. We've got a fire sign here that might be important. We've got a Leo woman that might be important. Could be a man as well, a feminine man. A lot of fire here, though. Uh, there's a fire sign that you're giving a lot of attention to or vice versa. There could be a fire sign that's paying a lot of attention to you. If it's not a fire sign, this could be anybody who obtains the energy of a very attractive woman, very passionate, kind of feisty, really bold. She's a leader. She's large and in charge. A um, lot of attention. There's a woman here, it could be you or someone else, that gets a lot of attention and recognition. But Scorpio, you're going to need to be very confident, okay, because there's going to be certain accomplishments and success and um, center of attention that's going to be put on you between now and October. Um, and I do want to remind you, there's a full moon in your sign at the end of April. There's a super moon in Scorpio. So this energy is very important for you. That's why you're stepping into a newfound confidence. Some of you are feeling more attractive. Some of you may have Aries Leo Sagittarius energy in your chart to help you step into this boldness. But this is definitely that Aries vibe. And it's reminding me of how you are also ruled by Mars, just like Aries. So this energy, you're kind of comfortable with it. Bottom of the deck, you're not going to believe this, but we have the death card. This is you. So you could be dealing with another Scorpio or someone with Scorpio in their chart. Or this could literally be you, Scorpio. The Scorpio energy that awaits us all at the end of April. There's something ending and beginning, though. There's this transformation. Even you, even death itself goes through transformation. And what's transforming for you, Scorpio? Well, it looks like your home, your family, your foundation. It looks like something in regards to the long term is ending or transforming. You've reached the end to a cycle. Could be an ending to a home or family situation, or there could be commitments that are ending for you. We have the moon card, which is Pisces. You could be dealing with a Pisces, but this is literally a message about the Scorpio full moon at the end of April. Moon and Scorpio someone may have here someone here may be afraid of commitment there might be competition there may be conflict we have virgo here that might be important could be a little bit of a battle going on with the virgo or someone needs to be very wise about what they express with the knight of swords okay don't miss an opportunity to speak your truth but don't be too impulsive be wise with your words because there are fights and arguments here because of secrets or illusions or fears maybe a pisces we got pisces and virgo here we got a virgo moon that might be important as well all right pisces and virgo are opposites so keep in mind these battles and conflict might have to do with something that is opposite of you maybe it's a taurus but yeah, we have the long-term and financial fulfillment here, cycles coming up for the future, but endings and beginnings, Scorpio. And remember, this has everything to do with how you live. So keep in mind, there may be new beginnings and endings as far as where you work, how you live, your rituals, your um, habitual behavior, things you do every day, your schedule, that kind of thing. But first and foremost, the tarot is telling you, to be confident you may have a fire sign around you who can help you be bold like this but i think you guys have this on your own as well really attractive scorpio a lot of attention success and victory maybe even promotions to mention at work accomplishments like wow you are definitely on your high horse here receiving acknowledgement for things that you've transformed and new beginnings happening in your life so this is about living as your new self scorpio stepping into who you really are and living as that every day from here on out so thank you so much, Scorpio. Let's move to Sagittarius. And out comes a card. Uh, okay. So I literally just got a message for Scorpio. You guys just saw me shuffle, right? Literally the same message just came out. So some of you guys might need to watch what I just spoke to Scorpio. Sagittarius, there's something here maybe about a Leo. This could be you. Queen of Wands can definitely be Sag. We got Scorpio showing up for you. I don't know if there's any Sag Scorpio energy hanging out, but I've seen it a little bit tonight during this reading. 
this could be you for you Sag meaning to take action there might be some kind of attention or ending I'm gonna reshuffle though but wow I can't believe that that just happened there's definitely some Scorpio Sagittarius energy hello let's try to get you a message out Sagittarius but please we please watch the Scorpio message so if that resonates if you have Scorpio energy you may just need to watch and hear hear something about that same message that just repeated itself so this is a message for the Aries new moon happening on April 11th, 2021 to October 20th, 2021. This is a six month cycle that is beginning here in April and it's happening in Aries. Okay, so this is your sister sign, Sagittarius. This is going to try new. This is going to be positive and harmonious. All right, Aries is your sister sign. So let's go ahead and see what's coming up for Sagittarius. This is your fifth house, especially if you're a Sagittarius rising. Please watch for your rising sign, you guys, because it'll resonate more as I mentioned the houses. So fifth house energy, Sagittarius, this is gonna be fun. This new moon is a, a new beginning of fun. This is about who you are. This is about self-expression. And I'll tell you why, because Aries is all about expression and who you are. The fifth house is about expression, soulmates, pleasure, um, creativity. So this is about your creative self, creating who you are, Sagittarius, having fun with it. Um, literally, like who you were as a child or who you are when it comes to children may be important here as well. But very fun aspect here for you. And I love that for you. Uh, very creative. You could be really feeling creative between now and October. And by October, you may wind up with a completely new self, an identity that you've created for yourself, somebody that is more, someone who you feel as more pleasurable, like you're going to feel like someone who's more at pleasure, more fun, as if Sagittarius can get any more fun. Come on. We have the Ten of Pentacles coming out for you, Sagittarius. So although this is such a fun energy, it is coming out with a very serious tarot card. Tarot card. So that kind of makes me think that although there's some fun things that you want to express and do over the next uh, five months, six months, there's also going to be the need to plan and commit. There's going to be this energy of family and home. So who you are in the future coming up. Got Taurus, Virgo, Capricorn. Got the Moon card here got Pisces some of you may live with a Pisces there may be a Pisces family member a commitment with a Pisces but this is the moon okay this is fears and secrets it could be cancer as well following your intuition paying attention to certain illusions being confident even if you're in the dark so this is you Sag this re this these two cards did want to come up for you you are very confident and bold much like Scorpio in regard in regardless of fears of what you can't see about the future you're confident um, you're on a high horse as well, getting a lot of attention, maybe from a Leo. This is the Queen of Wands is Leo. Leo Moon may be important here. We have the Four of Wands. So your home environment's coming up. Commitment is coming up. Marriage, partnership. You may have commitment anxiety. Commitment is coming up. Here's fear and commitment twice. So there may be two different things that you fear. Two different commitments. One of them is giving you anxiety. I'm not sure how you guys are sleeping, if there's any nightmares when it comes to uh, commitment. Some of you guys are holding on to maybe an earth sign, Taurus, Virgo, Capricorn. You're trying to hang on to stability and be more secure because some of you guys have financial anxiety in the home. All right, I do see a message about that, but don't have anxiety about commitment or marriage. Be confident. All right, make sure you're expressing yourself because you're getting a lot of attention between now and October, Sagittarius. And you're going to reach a higher version of yourself. And we have the moon again. So, yeah, there are certain fears to take action. There are certain fears to be bold and express yourself. But Aries is going to help you. This is literally Aries moon, Leo moon, Sagittarius moon, but lots of attention secretly. Okay, you guys may be afraid to be in the spotlight, but there's just something here about planning, something here about financial fulfillment and completions that you're going through. Um, some of you guys, there may be children to mention here because you are going through fifth house energy of children, soulmates, pleasure, and creativity. So this is about creating your future self, creating a more happier self. I haven't mentioned happiness, but the fifth house is very joyous. It's laughter. It's fun. It's soulmates. There may be new soulmates or new creative projects that you guys tap into between now and October. But Sag, have fun with this, okay? Even though there's this serious energy coming up, there's a lot of darkness, the future is unknown, have fun, be who you are. That's literally the only fucking rules. I know you guys don't like rules, but that's only the only rule, Sagittarius. Be who you are and have fun with these new beginnings, okay? 
So thank you, Sagittarius. Let's move to Capricorn. Capricorn, you are also getting a message of accomplishment, victory. There's a lot of attention for a lot of the zodiac signs coming out with this moon. Okay, this may have to do with a commitment, a wedding, a celebration, some kind of relationship. Okay, home environment. But yeah, Cap, you are on the success train as well, along with um, a few of the other signs that I just read for the Six of Wands. A lot of attention and stuff, but... Um, this is the Aries New Moon message for April on the 11th all the way to October 20th, 2021. A card fell on the floor. Please hang on. We're going to go ahead and keep this because it fell. But what I was saying is we have a six-month cycle opening up here for you, Capricorn, um, with this Aries New Moon, all right? So Aries is an interesting sign for you because it's cardinal just like you, but it takes action in a little bit of a different way. Aries is bold and sometimes impulsive, and Capricorn is like, yeah, I'm going to take action, but I'm going to fucking plan first. I'm going to make sure it's grounded. I'm going to make sure that that there's contracts and time efficiency energy because there's karma, right? So basically, Aries and Sagittarius are at a 90 degree angle on the zodiac wheel, and that's kind of a harsh degree. It comes along with compromise and conflict. So there's definitely something here about um, compromising yourself when it comes to family and your home environment. This is all about your home, um, Capricorn. Aries is four houses away from you, especially if you're a Capricorn rising. Please watch for your rising sign, you guys, so it, ma it makes more sense when I talk about the houses but Capricorn yeah four houses away is Aries so this is about who you are when it comes to your family who this is about having a foundation having a new foundation which may come in the form of a new home between now and October um, there's definitely new beginnings in, in the family and um, new foundations that are going to be built and you'll realize in October you're you're able to be who you are more because of this these new family situations it doesn't have to be blood but these are just people you live with um, you know, this may have to do with your mother. The fourth house is all about the roots of who you are, okay? Finding new roots and why you are the way that you are, Capricorn. How Are there any aspects of yourself um, that are rooted in your ancestry or your family or where you come from? Because there's a reason why you are the way that you are, Capricorn. Okay, so this new moon is in your fourth house. New stuff happening with family, home environments, and that kind of thing. The card that came out for you is the sun. It looks like there's going to be a lot of positivity and happiness between now and October. You could be dealing with a Leo. You could be dealing with um, children. This is the, the child. It could be your inner child, Capricorn. But this is the most positive deck in the tarot. Anybody will tell you that. Okay, this is light, awareness, clarity, joy, literally warm energy, warm weather. So it's all light from here on out, even though Pluto is still in your sign. Um, this is about a happy home or new happy beginnings, being happy with who you are. And we have the Four of Pentacles, so this is about stability. There's that fourth house home energy, hanging on to your happiness, hanging on to your values. Give me more for Capricorn, um, for the Aries new moon. Give me a message for Capricorn, for the Aries new moon. Don't compromise your happiness. So if you're not happy with where you live, if you're not happy... Um, with certain family things, that's going to be an issue because it's compromising who you are. This is about being happy with who you are and creating a foundation for your happy self. So we got literally the Wheel of Fortune, Sag and Leo here. There's going to be some happy changes that take place, Capricorn. Maybe even some travel between now and October to warmer places. You could be dealing with a Leo, Scorpio, Aquarius, Taurus. Um, this may be a, this may come in in the summer. This looks like summer. So the spring and the summer is going to be really happy season for you. Okay, happy changes, happy fortune. There's things going to be turning around in your favor. Things are going to be looking light. Very vibrant energy here. There may be a happy home environment or happy family situation. But we have the Nine of Wands here. Of course, you're still on guard when it comes to certain things because there's also certain things that you're juggling. Okay, could have to do with your mother, like I said, or you as a mother. You're definitely juggling two different jobs. You're going to get a promotion, Capricorn. We got Taurus here. A lot of commitments in accomplishments, okay, in working together, working two different jobs, being abundant, and really just protecting that, being able to persevere. We have the King of Cups, the Five of Cups. There could be a water sign here or just love in general that you have regrets. We got a Scorpio here um, that may have regrets with you. There's a need to stand up for yourself and your feelings though, Capricorn, all right, definitely, because there's there's some secret cycles here that are being highlighted when it comes to the position that you're needing to defend when it comes to your regret or depression. 
Um, but really, I can just see that there's going to be some positive change for you guys, okay? Maybe even in the home or in the family. But this is about finding your roots. This is about who you're fated to be, who you are when it comes to your family. So yeah, Capricorn, I don't really know if there's a better message than that, okay? There's going to be some things that change between now and October and way sooner than that too. Like basically from right now all the way up until October, things are going to be slowly changing as far as fate and fortune. There's going to be expansion here, travel and happiness, knowledge. Um, and you know, Jupiter is an Aquarius. You already had Jupiter go through your sign, so you're kind of aware of those, those fated and fortunate cycles. So I love that. I love that there's going to be some happy changes and happy turning turning points for you, okay? And it's going to have something to do with stepping into who you are and creating a foundation for that, okay? Might even involve waiting, all right? So this, this is some messages that are shifting to Aquarius now. Um, we have the Chariot and the Six of Pentacles, Cancer Energy. So hi, Aquarius. Welcome to the Aries New Moon on April 11th all the way to October 20th, 2021. We've got a new moon six-month cycle opening up in the sign of Aries, which is your third house on the Zodiac Wheel, especially if you're Aquarius rising. So please watch for your rising sign, you guys. So let's see uh, what the Aries New Moon message is for Aquarius, Sun, Moon, and Rising. What is the Aries New Moon message for Aquarius, please? And as I mentioned, this is your third house. I'm going to keep that because um, it resonates. So this has everything to do with um, boldly communicating who you are, Aquarius. All right. A lot of communication, a lot of thoughts here. Okay. Bold thoughts. Being in control of your mindset. Give me more for Aquarius. Okay. And that just came out. So, yeah, third house energy, who you are, who you think you are is exactly who you are, um, Aquarius. This is a new beginnings. Now, but between now and October, there's going to be a new mindset that you come into um, in relation to who you are. You're going to be thinking differently about yourself. Your lower mind um, and your identity are coming up here. So new conversations and new communication with those around you are going to be important. Between now and October, you're going to speak with many people. You're going to have very important conversations that are in some way going to illuminate the truth of who you are. The third house occupies the truth. Okay, so this is about the truth of who you are, communicating that, all right, um, having important conversations. And it's interesting because I have the Five of Swords here, and this is an Aquarius energy, Gemini, Libra as well, but this is about no longer fighting. It's going to be very interesting communication for you now that you've had a new moon in your third house. Um, this is about new beginnings in communication, communicating with new people, but no longer fighting with those who you can't communicate your truth with. These are people you cannot be yourself with, Aquarius. They play mind games. Um, they have distracted you from your true path. Okay, you do have a choice to make here with the Two of Wands. Over the next six months, you're going to be in between where you've been and where you're going. There may be some conflict or arguments that you experience when it comes to uh, the path that you're walking. This is about being in between where you've been and where you're going. Comfort and growth. Okay, choosing a new direction for yourself that doesn't involve conflict mentally, that doesn't involve arguments, mind games, trickery. There's a certain decision here that you may or someone else may not make. And there's a, there's going to be individuals with this third house activation, especially having an Aries third house, communicating with very bold, arrogant people, loud. This is about your loud truth, Aquarius. And you may be one of these peaceful, peaceful people in the background who are deciding not to communicate because you're going to encounter individuals that represent... Um, you know, Aries third house where they, they want to get the last word. They're argumentative. Okay. They're conflicted, but they're acting this way because of betrayal. They're people who act and speak this way, like this man here have been through a certain trauma and that doesn't give them an excuse, but just be prepared to experience certain conflict. Um, when you're at crossroads and stuff between now and October, all right, make sure you're still choosing, um, new passion for yourself. Don't hold yourself back. You could be dealing with a Leo or have Leo energy, but you're going to need strength um, in order to explore options for yourself because there's going to be new beginnings as well that are communicated. You may be a little overwhelmed emotionally and that might be why you're holding yourself back. But what I really see here is a conflicted path that you're going to have to choose between you know, staying comfortable in these these arguments where you're at in life now, Aquarius, and really looking to the horizon. Um, of you know, It might involve taking an L you know, choosing a better path for yourself might involve leaving this energy behind, but trust me, that, that means winning in the end. 
okay? If all you lost was a headache and conflict, you won, okay? So just keep in mind, especially with this third house energy, when it comes to communicating, you know, you may get in certain talks about, uh, you know, this is who I am now, guys, and this is where I want to go. And there might be people that, oh, really, Aquarius, you want to do that? Really, Aquarius, you're going there? And you're not even going to want to engage with these people, okay? You're not, you don't want to argue about who you are or where you're going. That's not something to argue about, something that true. You know, don't argue about the truth with people um, because the truth is the truth, okay? And that there's only one direction to go. I know there's two wands, but when it comes to the truth, um, that's the only direction for you to go in. So I just want you to keep that in mind when it comes to your lower mind over the next six months. You're going to have a lot of information. This new moon in Aries is going to, it's going to upload and down, download a lot of new information of your lower mind. It's that Mercury energy. So there's going to be a lot of new thoughts that are planted. When you have a new moon in the third house, the moon literally becomes a seed in your mind. Okay, so yeah. This is about a new direction without conflict, no longer holding yourself back in these petty situations, going the distance with yourself, thinking about things in a completely new way, okay? But thinking about yourself in a new way as well, with this new moon in Aries in your third house, boldly communicating who you are and going on those, going in those directions regardless of what that means for other people who are argumentative and combative. You know, it's kind of hard to win an argument with a genius, it's kind of hard to win an argument with an Aquarius. So just know if you did, it's because the Aquarius did not think, didn't even want to waste time on you. They're too busy changing their life and literally looking out to, like, you guys have Saturn in your sign. So commitments and things like that are important. So hopefully that helped Aquarius, new moon in your third house. Last but not least, let's move on to Pisces. Hi, Pisces. This is a new moon in Aries for April 11th, 2021. We have a six-month cycle opening up until October 20th, 2021. So Aries is all about your second house of finances and possession, Pisces. This is a very tangible realm, which you're not used to. Second house is kind of interesting to a 12th house energy like you. So this is when spirit is really great grounded this is when pisces really starts taking a look at what they tangibly own their worth their value all right we had a new moon in pisces last month and now we're in a new moon in your second house if you're a pisces rising especially so please watch for your rising sign if i haven't said that so let's see what the new moon in pisces messages for i'm sorry let's see what the new moon in aries messages for pisces and we have a card coming out interesting Pisces so second house energy this is not about dreaming and and all these things although we can incorporate that energy but the second house is very tangible it's materialistic all right so this has to do with our very tangible self this is this means that Pisces the the genie the guru the spirit the subconscious is becoming grounded in the tangible reality when we go through Aries energy so this is about who we are uh, in, in regards to our stability, in regards to our security. This is about um, certain possessions and items that represent who we are as well, Pisces. But valuing ourselves. You know, Aries is all about who we are. Second house is all about value. So we need to value ourselves over the next six months, Pisces. Come October, we're going to really, you know, have a lot of new financial beginnings by that time, a lot of new money, there's going to be a lot of new things that we own and have. I know that's kind of strange, um, but this cycle is all about um, our tangible possessions. So when you have a new moon in your second house like this, there can definitely be new money, new income, new values, possessions, and tangibility, okay? But this is the physical realm, and it's interesting because that's exactly what's coming up in the tarot card. So this is a very clear message about some of us literally stepping into new beginnings when it comes to those we work with. Um, this is a great message for um, a second house moon. So this is literally a seed planting energy, Pisces. Whatever comes up between now and October, it is potentially a seed to be planted into the future. Um, there may be new collaborations. This looks like a new job, okay? By October, there's going to be people, new new people that we work amongst financially. These are about people we um, associate with financially, who we collaborate with financially, and how that either uh, accommodates who we are or compromises who we are. So as we step into this new valued sense of self, this is about valuing our ourself a lot more, Pisces. There's going to be new offers and new things that we find that we can plan, okay? And I feel like this is an offer to work together with certain people who also have a similar goal, a similar plan, a similar contract. 
But we also have the death card and the seven of pentacles here. So we're going to have to really, this is a literally a reaping of the harvest energy. We have the grim reaper here and we have the harvest here. So this is about taking a step back and seeing what grows between now and the Scorpio full moon. We have a Scorpio moon showing up here that you may be encountering, but we have a Scorpio super full moon at the end of April. So there's going to be something here that we intuitively know is ending, Pisces, between now and then, and maybe even all the way up until October. But we have the Nine of Cups, so it looks like there's going to be some kind of wish fulfilled. Follow your intuition, Pisces, about what needs to end um, in order to get some kind of wish fulfilled. Keep that in mind when it comes to crossroads and decisions, okay? Because we have two of those. We have three of those. We have the zodiac sign Gemini showing up. So there is a significant relationship. These are three cards that symbolize choice. You are at a crossroads, at a crossroads that is at a crossroads. These are three crossroads, Pisces. Talk about indecision. You may have a decision to make in regards to an earth sign or maybe something here. Look at this Taurus materialistic realm that just came up. But also, look at the fact that there's new love, maybe even with an Aquarius. We have Aquarius energy here. Mercury. But knowing you have all the resources, Pisces, like the stable king of pentacles, um, there's something here about relationships here, making a choice between money and love, uh, comfort and growth, where you've been and where you're going. There is a difficult decision that you're going to have to make between comfort and growth. What you've known and what you have yet to experience Okay, um, some of you guys need to be very patient, but this is about really, really reaping a harvest, okay? Really seeing, so basically, let me just put this, put this bluntly. By October, you're going to know whether you've wasted your time or whether your hard work has paid off, just like this farmer. Okay, you're going to know how much money, time, energy, and effort that you put into a person, place, or situation in all things in your life, and you're going to know whether they are fulfilling or whether they need to end, okay? You're gonna to need to tap into your intuition about both because something is changing here, Pisces, at a subconscious level for you, at a spiritual, intuitive level. Pay attention to your dreams. If you dream about certain endings involving certain people, places, or things, that's very telling. So back to your main message, we've got new offers here. Um, there's gonna be a lot of new tangible beginnings um, when it comes to those you're working with. It might be online collaborations, a new beginning online, apologies, offers, gifts. I mean, lots of things coming into our tangible reality, Pisces. And you wanna know why? Because we know who we are now. This Aries energy has really revealed to us a, a new version of ourselves, And it's gonna wanna show you who you are, Pisces, by physical things, okay? Um, who you are, and what you have are quite different, but what you have in some ways says a lot about who you are. So who are you, Pisces, and what do you have? Do you value those things? Are you stable? Are you secure? Because you're going to be in October. All right, so let me just get one last message. Why not? One last message for the Aries moon. We have the Page of Swords. We've got, you know, some things that we need to know because of this Aries new moon. All right. There's some things that we need to know. That might be for you, Pisces, if you're still looking, listening. But guess what? This is a new moon message, you guys. I can't make this shit up. I know we have regrets emotionally. For some reason, this Aries new moon is highlighting that. It's highlighting what we've carried emotionally. It's highlighting what we feel is heavy in love and regret and depression. A lot of us are feeling that. But guess what? The sun and the moon are working together to change everything this new moon in Aries. We have the sun and the moon. That is a new moon. And we have Jupiter. So this is a very expansive new moon. It's going to change things. It's going to turn things around in our favor. And it's going to deliver the things that we needed to know. That missing piece of information in regards to who we are. We're going to be watched. Uh, we're all being watched. So why not be watched for exactly who we are? Don't be afraid to be watched. Don't be afraid to be seen as who you are. Because this is going to really, really uncover the subconscious for us. Okay? So, you guys, thank you so much for watching this video. I'm glad to be back, and I hope you guys have a great Aries new moon cycle between April and October 2021. I hope we are all really confident in stepping in to who we really are and harnessing this Aries energy to the best of our ability in relation to our own unique birth charts. And the next full moon is on April 27th. 28th is at the end of April, that's all I know, and it's a super full moon in Scorpio. I will definitely want to be back on here to talk to you guys about that then. Can't wait, and I will see you guys in the next video. Bye!